Hello and thanks for watching. Welcome to part 11 of Road to Omega, a series of videos covering the Wipeout games leading up to the release of Wipeout Omega Collection on the PlayStation 4. In this video we're going to have a quick look at Wipeout 2048 on the PlayStation Vita. I say quick because it's uh, part of the Omega Collection so I don't really want to ruin that for myself and we'll just have a brief look at this game. So here's the box. You can get this digital and physical and uh, it's pretty weak box art for the Wipeout series. They've um, gone back to a regular font for the logo instead of something quite unique like almost all of the previous games. And the, the art just doesn't really jump out. It's a bit, bit bland for Wipeout, strangely. I'm not sure if they were maybe not planning on having a physical release to begin with and this was a last minute job or... Yeah, a bit weak. But yeah, there it is. And then... Um, yeah, so you can also get the uh, digital version of the game, obviously. And, um, yeah, we'll cut across, look at some gameplay and talk about it a bit. Okay, so this is the intro to Wipeout 2048. It's quite a cool little intro. It shows the evolution of motorsport. And how we got from here to Wipeout. So yeah, this game came out in 2012, and unfortunately it was the last Wipeout made by Studio Liverpool before they were shut by Sony. And it's going to be part of the Omega Collection. So it's a pretty good release. It's got a few minor problems, but um, from what, everything I've read they've been fixed for the Omega Collection, so that's good to know. And I feel like if the studio hadn't shut, they might have even had time to uh, fix the issues with the Vita version as well. I love this bit. Very reminiscent of Roll Cage from the PlayStation 1. Just looks really cool. And then we jump to the Wipeout we know. Twenty forty eight. So why twenty forty eight? Well, that is a, a couple of years before the original Wipeout game. So in Wipeout lore, this is set before the original game. So the Vita uses touchscreen, and if you can see the background, that's me touching the back pad on the Vita, is making those little triangles move around. And you can see here as well, I've got the DLC. You can get some DLC for this game, and it's the HD and the Fury campaign from the PlayStation 3. If you already own these, uh, I think that you get them free to download for this. But yeah, we're, we're not looking at those. They're basically the same sort of thing as the PlayStation 3. So we're going to go into Wipeout 2048. And there we go. That's explaining how it's the birth of the sport, pretty much. And here we go, this is the campaign grid. There is multiplayer, and um, the multiplayer is similar to this. You have to go through a grid system. But yeah, here we go, so you can see again, pressing the back touchpad and it's doing that. And we touch there to start. And yeah, so here's the um, what we need to do in this race. There's no weapons, it's a straight up race. So let's just go into it. And yeah, you can see here the default controls are um, not standard wipeout, what you're used to from previous games. There aren't custom controls in this game, and that's a bit of a problem. Because uh, from previous games, people are used to being able to set their own controls. And I think there are only three default settings for this game, which isn't great. Um, another issue was the load times were quite long. They've improved them with a patch, but originally when the game first came out, they were a bit too long. It's 
people weren't too impressed with that. So first thing I'm going to do is change the controls. Here we go. I think these are, that's what I want. There we go. So yeah, you can use the D-pad or the analog stick to steer your ship. You've got your air brakes like in the previous games. And you can straight away see how good the game looks. So you hit the speed pads to go faster, like the previous games. And we don't have weapons in this um, race, but so I can't show you, but we do have offensive weapon pads and defensive weapon pads. So it's a bit different to the previous games. It's a bit more tactical. And they're different colours, so you can easily tell the difference. We have three different views. Interior exterior and far exterior I tend to play with the exterior view and yeah you've got your accelerator and your uh, shield energy in the bottom right sorry your accelerator in the bottom right and your shield energy in the bottom left and uh, you'll notice you're getting XP which is new to the series and that basically adds up to your level, uh, your rank, and you rank up throughout the game. So yeah, as this is a prequel of sorts, it's a bit of a um, grittier looking game. It's somewhere in between Formula 1 and the original Wipeout. So you see you're at street level here racing through the city on uh, some roads that have been changed into the track and stuff it's quite cool it's a different sort of look for the series and yeah as we're in road to omega i should mention that the upgrade of this looks amazing on the playstation 4 i've seen a few screenshots i've actually avoided videos as um i'm really looking forward to seeing 2048 on the ps4 and I want it to be a surprise, so I've actually avoided looking at gameplay for that. But I have read about what they've done to it and seen a few screenshots. And it's um, it's looking like a good upgrade. And they've inc uh, included split screen as well. Which is cool. So here we are back on the grid. And um, we'll just go into the next one. So this one has weapons, but they're offensive weapons only. And you have this thing now where you can pass the event and you can also elite pass the event. So we just have to finish to pass. And um, you can look at your best times and this gives you what's going on. So C-Class, instead of having Vector, Venom, Flash, Rapier and Phantom speed classes, it's done by letters now. So you have C-Class, uh, B-Class, A-Class, stuff like that. Let's get into this. So yeah, a few people were upset by the um, lack of custom con controls when the game came out and the load time issue. And also one of the biggest problems with this game is there's no custom races. There's no race box. You have to just go through the grid if you want to find a specific race you want to play. Massive oversight on the developer's part there. And I don't know if they were going to add it as the studio did get shuttered, so we don't know really what they had planned, but a bit strange that they didn't really think about that one. However, they have um, fixed that for the Wipeout Omega Collection. Racebox is included for all 2048 content, so that's very good, and I'm really looking forward to that. One of my favourite tracks in this game is Altima, the last track. And that is the first track in the original Wipeout, so it's quite a cool connection between the two games, as this is a prequel. But yeah, trying to navigate the um, grid to pick that track and in a speed class I want to race on and stuff was a, a pain before, so having race box would be nice. And you can see visually in the background there of the city and stuff, this game just looks so good. It looks good already, so 
on the uh, PS4 it's going to look incredible. So here we go, we're back on the grid screen. You, sh you can see in the top right you've got your rank. And over here you can see I've unlocked a new ship. And you can move the grid around like this with your fingers. You start in 2048 and you basically go through the years in the league. So 2049 and then 2050. And um, can I show you the ships? Yeah, here we go. So you have to unlock all the ships. And basically the way it works in this game is... You've got uh, different types of ships for different events. And we've got less teams, obviously, because this is a prequel. So we've got Pfizer, AG Systems, Kyrex, Oricom, and Piranha. And we've just unlocked the fighter class for Pfizer. So you use this for c more combat orientated events. Um, I think that's a race, though. Oh, it's, it needs weapons, so we'll give this a go. Yep, so here we go. So your um, ships, depending what type they are, will use, be able to use different kinds of weapons. So a fighter class, I think, has um, do it more, more weapons at its disposal than a uh, speed class ship. <clears throat> So you've probably noticed you can uh, still barrel roll in this game. I did that a couple of times in the last few tracks. And uh, you still lose energy when you barrel roll and you um, get your little speed boost if you land it. So yeah, that's you can see there with the fighter class you get three rockets and in the, if I was in a speed class ship you'd get one rocket so they have little advantages like that there we go that's a quick look at that so here we are we're in a time trial on the next track and um, we probably won't show you too much more because like I said before, this is a short video. We're going to focus on looking at the Omega Collection and looking at Wipeout 2048 in that. But I think you get the idea about the game from this short look at it. it is, it's a good game. It's missing a few features. And it's really unfortunate what happened to Studio Liverpool after this. Who knows what they would have done next. I feel like they would have learnt from missing features in this game and just maybe made the next wipeout something really incredible. It's unfortunate we'll never know. But yeah, so looking forward to the um, Omega Collection. I think it was really cool the way they announced that. A lot of people were saying, oh yeah, you know, it's awful that you shut Sony uh, Studio Liverpool and now you're um, putting out another wipeout. But I think the people that work there are probably quite happy to see the series continuing and um, the collection they're releasing is built on their work. It's they, they made most of that game. I think they should be proud of that. I hope they're proud of it. I think everyone knows that they put in a lot of hard work in these games. That's not to take anything away from the people who are working on the Omega Collection. It's a collaborative collection really. You should look at it like that, I suppose. Um, but yeah, it's, when they announced it at the PlayStation Experience, or PSX 2016 in de December last year, I, I thought it was amazing. Like They just announced the Uncharted um, Lost Legacy thing, and then Sean Layden, the head of Sony, just strolls out wearing a Wipeout t-shirt. And I was immediately thinking, what? What's this? Let's just go into this and I'll keep telling you about this. And yeah, so he strolls out in a Wipeout t-shirt. It's quite obviously from Pure Pulse HD sort of time. I'll just put in a picture of it just now actually and you can see. And yeah, so he, he strolls out in that and I was thinking, hang on, Wipeout? And then I thought to myself, oh it's probably just HD on the um, PS4. 
and then they uh, cut to a reveal for Marvel vs. Capcom and he came back out and he's like oh yeah I love the classic games um, we've got something else to show you and then they showed the trailer and it pops up with Wipeout at the end and I'm thinking cool and then HD appeared and then Fury appeared and then 2048 appeared and I was like oh brilliant and then um, the crowd loved it and it was quite nice to see that that the series um, still had a lot going for it and um, I remember Twitter it was uh, trending on Twitter as well for a while and um, it's just good to see people were genuinely happy to see the series carrying on so yeah it's pretty cool I'm looking forward to the Omega Collection I'm optimistic about the future of the series I don't know if they can go anywhere else if they're um, if this is it, if this is the last hurrah, or if they could put DLC in the Omega Collection, or if they could even, if they get the sales, maybe they can make a new game. Here's hoping. But yeah, this has been a look at Wipeout 2048. This entire series has been a trek towards Omega Collection, and um, let's see where we go from here. Thank you very much for watching.